Are you ready to step into a school leadership position and have a lasting impact on your educational community? Listen, as somebody who was a first year teacher who's worked my way up through the ranks, I know just how rewarding that journey can be. And in today's episode, we're gonna share three strategies that help me go from classroom teacher to school principal and beyond. So whether you're a first time interviewee or you are looking to make your next promotion and jump to the next level of leadership, today's episode is gonna be packed full of useful information. Grab a pen, a piece of paper, and get ready to take some notes because we're going to start right now. Hey everyone, Gordon Amerson here, Superintendent of Schools and Gallup Certified Strengths Coach. And on this channel, we leverage my experience from classroom teacher to school district superintendent to help you go further faster in your educational journey. If this is your first time with us, don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you don't miss any cool updates or any of our latest and newest episodes. Hey everybody, welcome in. Today's episode is a special one because today we're gonna explore how to help you just stand out and thrive and excel in your next school leadership interview. Now I can remember my, my first experience with what it was gonna mean to potentially be a school leader. And so the story goes that I'm finishing up a day out on the field as I was the head baseball coach at the high school I was teaching at. I went back to my classroom where I was a science teacher and I wanted to get the room ready for the next level of demos, the next day of instruction. And so I was leaving the campus somewhere between 5.30 and 6 o'clock or so. And I happened to walk past the principal's office. And as I'm walking past the principal's office, she always had her door open to the quad and the lunch area because she was always super accessible. As a school leader, one tip, one, one hack that before we even get into the, the meat of the content is always be accessible. But, and she personified always being accessible. So as I'm walking by her classroom, her door is open and I get past and then all of a sudden I hear her yell, yell my name, Amerson, get in here. And so in that moment, you know, kind of life flashes before your eyes. So I'm like, oh my gosh, what did I do wrong? So I sheepishly walked back into her office and she had this, things she would do. And uh, as I'm getting older in life, I, I have to have these too, but I'll just show you. So she did this thing with her glasses. So I'm going to put my glasses on, but she, she put her glasses on. She wore glasses like this almost all the time. She's looking at me over the top of her glasses, kind of like this. And she said, you know what? You, you're going to be one heck of an assistant principal. I literally was like a, like a deer in headlights. I was like, me? I could be an assistant principal? I mean, I didn't even know what that meant. I just was happy to have my teaching credential and have my classroom and, and coach my athletes and, and do something special for my students in my classroom on a daily basis. But I didn't know about leading a school, being in charge of programs, being in charge of grade levels, running meetings. I didn't know about any of that. However, she saw something in me. She saw a spark that maybe I didn't even see in myself yet. So it led me down a path of exploration. It led me down a path of researching and finding out what that is. And so whatever your path is that's brought you to a place where you're ready to step into the interview room, where you are ready to put your name in the pile of applications to be considered to lead a school, to be an assistant principal, to be a principal, to lead a department. Know and understand what the key things that principals and directors and assistant superintendents and superintendents are looking for in school level leaders is gonna be really, really critically important. And so in today's episode, we wanna talk about three strategies, three big ideas that you want to always be thinking about as you prepare and go into your next school level leader interview. So let's get started with idea number one. All right, idea number one. You really want to think about this as you prepare for your next school leader interview. And that is how do you demonstrate visionary leadership? This is core to the function, the responsibilities, 
and the core capacities of any school level leader. It's the ability to cast and then articulate vision. Like, where do you want to be? Where do you want to take the department? Where do you want to be and where do you want to take the school? And so three things you want to think about is the ability to articulate a clear vision. What you want to see, and then the answer to this question is, this is what I want to see in the next six months, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months, casting that vision of here's where I see us going. And then here's how I'd like us to get there. And that's where you're inviting people into the conversation. That's where you're onboarding people to be able to help vision out how we get there through a shared collaborative process. But being able to clearly articulate that vision is going to be important. And then also understanding that as a visionary leader, you've got to be innovative and you've got to be adaptive. You've got to be able to see things that other people can't see yet and then be able to share that as a part of your vision. But you also have to be smart and resilient and adaptable to change, to pivot, to go in a different direction when the leadership calls for you to do that. And when the, the writing on the wall, if you will, calls for you to do that. So as we're thinking about how we demonstrate that visionary leadership, we're casting that clear vision, we're being innovative and we're being adaptable. And at the very end of the day, it's all so we create and build this positive environment, this positive culture, this place where people, where your staff is highly engaged, where your students are cared for and they're nurtured and they're thriving. So your visionary leadership is to effectuate those things, to be clear about where you wanna go, to be innovative and adaptable, and then to create that place and that space where everybody who wakes up, that they're gonna go to that school, they're excited and they can't wait for what's gonna happen that day. And so these are the major factors that you wanna think about. Like when you start to demonstrate or share with an interview panel what you wanna do and what type of leader you are, idea number one is being able to demonstrate that visionary leadership. All right, idea number two. And it's all about being able to showcase strong instructional leadership. At the end of the day, we are talking about school level leadership and in some cases, maybe district level leadership, but all of it is around education. All of it is around schools, which means that our core function as an entity, as an institution, is to increase the academic performance and the social emotional growth and development of the students and scholars that we serve. And so show, showcasing strong instructional leadership is core to the work that we would do as school level leaders. And so as you think about interviewing, there are really three areas that I would want you to point to and really focus on as you prepare. The first one is being data driven in your decision making, looking at all the different data sets that are available to you to take up, take in as much information as possible to be able to make an informed decision, looking at data academic data, instructional data, academic performance and outcomes, formative outcomes, discipline data, budgetary data, all the different data sets that are available to you, but being able to take all that information in and then being able to have collaborative conversations with your staff, with your leaders about what this data means and what are the next steps that we need to take and being data driven in your decision making gives you a platform and gives you some real foundation for being able to make critical and tough decisions and then being able to then monitor and see how those decisions play out. Couple that data driven decision making with creating robust professional development opportunities for yourself, for your certificated staff, for your classified staff, as well as your other management staff that you may supervise. You gotta have professional development. At the core of who we are is growing the skills, the knowledge, and the capacity of everybody in the organization that we have the privilege of leading. The skills, the knowledge, and the capacity. Growing that, expanding that for every person in the organization 
that is the sign of great leadership is that now I've given these additional skills, these additional abilities. We've seen these additional positive outcomes as a result of the training, the seminars, the professional growth, the conferences, whatever we create and whatever we create opportunities to participate in and then creating some feedback loops where we share that growth, we share that learning with each other for the benefit of the entire organization is critically important because you want to use professional development as a way to create an engaging, connected, collaborative, and somewhat, at the end of the day, a very accountable organization that you're leading. And having those professional development opportunities tied back to that data-driven decision-making is going to be critically important. And then lastly, making sure that the curriculum and the instructional strategies are rich, they're diverse, they are wide ranging, they're pulling from lots of different areas and perspectives, but giving that wide breadth of instructional strategies and curriculum uh, suggestions, selections, if you will, is gonna be critically important. We have an ever growing diverse student population, an ever growing diverse society with lots of different information, lots of different things. And we wanna create these learning opportunities for students that are very, very rich. And so thinking about if I was sitting in an interview and I was being asked about instruction and curriculum, I would be sharing all of these new innovative ways of getting at the instructional strategies and getting at their curriculum. I'd be talking about leveraging technology. I'd be talking about leveraging things like AI, artificial intelligence. I would be talking about those things because those new, innovative, creative ways to deepen the instructional experience for you as an educator and for the people that you lead, but then also the experience that your students get to go through by having these rich, creative, innovative, and out of the box ways of learning content is gonna be really important. So as a leader, how do you create that space? How do you create those opportunities? That's gonna be a way that you stand out in the interview. And so you're gonna to wanna to think, think long and hard about kind of strategy number two of showcasing those strong instructional leadership chops. All right, and that's idea number two. All right, before we move into idea number three, let's talk about sharing with us in the comments below, what are some ways that you're gonna showcase your instructional leadership chops? in the next interview. Like what things will you highlight? What things would you showcase? What things do you want the interview panel to know about you and your instructional leadership capacity? Share that with us in the comments below and let's move to idea number three. All right, idea number three is all about exhibiting effective communication and community engagement. Communication is and will always be one of the most difficult things for us as leaders to do. I struggle with it. Other superintendent colleagues, other educational leadership colleagues, we struggle with it not because we don't wanna do it, but it's always gonna be a challenge because communicating is complex. Uh, it needs to be frequent. It needs to be uh, in a way that is uh, engaging to people so that way they get your message, they get your information. And so let's talk about three ways that you can leverage some strategies in your leadership to be effective in communication and engaging with the community. So the first thought is always be focused on stakeholder collaboration. You have internal stakeholders and you have external stakeholders. So your internal stakeholders are your staff. You know, it's going to be your certificated staff, your teachers, your counselors, your psychologists, your speech language pathologist. Your internal stakeholders are also your classified staff, so your office staff, your nutrition services staff, your maintenance and operations staff. You want to make sure that you're engaging with those internal stakeholders. Another group of internal stakeholders are your students. How are you listening to students? How are you getting student voice and getting that incorporated into your thinking, your decision making. But that stakeholder in, uh, engagement, that stakeholder collaboration is critically important. Now let's talk about external stakeholders, your parents. How often are you engaging with your parents 
Are you using some sort of a monthly newsletter? Are you using some sort of a weekly communication? How are you sharing with them and educating your parents, educating those families around all the great things that are happening on campus? How are you leveraging and communicating with those external stakeholders, your parents, when there's an emergency, when there's a critical piece, piece of information that needs to be shared? What are the systems that you have in place to make sure that they feel empowered with the information to be able to support you, but also know and understand that their students are safe and secure? Other ex external stakeholders, your, dist your district office, you know, university and higher ed partners, community-based partners that are businesses, entities within the community. All of those external stakeholders will help you to build the bridges and build trust and build resiliency for the work that you need to do as a school level leader. So understanding that stakeholder collaboration needs to happen on the internal and also on the external. But I will tell you, focusing First and, for, first and foremost, focusing on your internal stakeholders and making sure you're building that strong, collaborative, positive school environment and school culture back to idea number one in the same video is going to be really where you want to put your time and your attention and especially highlight and showcase that as you're thinking about and responding in the context of an interview. You want to have that transparent, secondarily, you want to have that transparent communication. Find ways to share your messaging via email, via text message, uh, via phone call, phone messages, written, newsletters, uh, parent square ad, um, advisories, whatever the platform is, have transparent communication. Always be sharing the who, the what, the when, the why, and the how. Give critical information. Give all of the information that you can that is legally permissible. Don't hold anything back. Be transparent. Share as much information as possible. The more you share, the more knowledge and information people have, and the more and the easier it will be to support you as a leader. From the context of an interview, you want to share that I'm a transparent communicator because I share the facts and I will give all the information to make sure that in my school community and my parents and my staff and our district office knows what's happening on our campus. So that way they know who know what is happening and know why it's happening and can support me as the leader, my staff, our students and our families. Sharing that and being transparent about how you do that is important. And then also almost as important is again building those community based partnerships. We no longer operate just in the four walls of just the school. Community partnerships help to build additional bridges. They bring additional opportunities, additional resources, additional things that will enhance and increase and optimize the school environment, the school experience, the opportunity to do bigger and better and more innovative and creative things manifest themselves out of these community-based partnerships. And how do you build those community-based partnerships? by being really effective at being collaborative with stakeholders, by being really effective and being a transparent communicator and sharing who you are, what you're about, what your school is about, what your staff is about, what your skills and knowledge and capacity is, and what your big vision is. That's how you build those community-based partnerships. And then you can create the opportunity for your students to thrive because they will directly benefit from those partnerships. Engaging the community and engaging community partners and being an effective communicator is hard work, but it is something that you will do constantly, almost on a daily basis. It's like, how am I effectively communicating and how am I effectively engaging with the community and how am I sharing my message and sharing my information and casting my vision? That is core. That is core to who you are. So as you prepare for your next interview and as you prepare for the next opportunity that might give you the opportunity to lead your own school, or promote to the next level of responsibility. I want you to be prepared to thrive in that next interview. And so I want you to check out this next video, which is gonna help you get all prepared to thrive in the next leadership interview that you have. Take these tips, take these ideas, incorporate them into responses, incorporate them into templatized you know, responses or answers that you may get 
because these are the big ideas that I'm thinking about and I know that other superintendent leaders are thinking about and they're very likely to come up in your next interview. So check out this next video here. Check the uh, resources and all the links below for coaching and mentorship and all that kind of good stuff. And we're going to see you on the next one. Thanks, everyone. Be well.